Okay, it's time for the grand finale. We have just one more template to code and that's the page template. So let's get to it. Let's open up the page controller and see if there's anything left to do here. Well, we already get the page content in the index method. It's in a variable called page. So let's go to the page method. Nope. All we need to do is remove the dump here. Okay, let's open up the page view. Now I'll just insert my temporary view snippet here and all we need to do is set the main content. Let's do an article tag, a heading to a P with a class of pub date and that's it. Let's expand that. Okay, now inside the heading we'll echo our escape function and pass in the page title. Now let's copy that and paste it in the pub date paragraph but we'll replace title with pub date of course. And finally let's echo the page body here. Well that was quick but I think we're done. So let's check in the browser, click contact to view a page. Ah good, we have some more work to do. Of course the page does not have a pub date so we can safely remove that. Uh, sorry about that folks. Okay, could this be it? Yep, that's our page right there. Click another one. Okay. Let's just go over the site again. We'll, we'll try and visit admin first. Let's log in, email, password. Okay, we're in our dashboard. And you know what would be nice to show the most recently updated articles here so we can edit them right from the dashboard. We'll do that in a minute. Now let's have a look at our pages. Right, edit a page and let's save that. Let's drag contact under about but I can see it's not working in the back end. Okay, let's go to news articles, they are nicely displayed. Let's edit the third article, the Darth Vader article, and alter the pub date. Um, oh, and while we're at it, let's add a future article, set it to next week, and we'll call it a future article, and um, it shouldn't be displayed on the uh, front page. We'll check that in a minute. And there's our users. Okay, we'll start with the page issue. Now let's just check that in the database. We dragged contact to be a child page of about, and that worked. See, it has a parent ID of four, which is equal to the ID of about. So we're probably retrieving it incorrectly. So let's go to our page model and into the get nested method, because that's a method we are using to fetch the navigation. And let's see what that returns. Now we'll do a dump of the array back to the site. Well, the about page should have a key of children, but it doesn't, okay? So let's see what we're doing here. So we'll just comment that this page has no parent. This is a child page. It's always handy to have these comments for the future. Now, the problem is with child pages, so it should be somewhere in this line, I think. Oh, yep, I know what's going on. If we encounter a page with a parent ID, it is added to the array. So we get an array like this. Um, right, just like that. But if later on in the loop we have a page that has that parent ID, that same parent ID as an ID, then that first key is overwritten. So I think that should be fixed if we change our order. So let's go to the constructor and let's order by parent ID first. So we know that all the parent keys have been set before we add any children keys. Let's see if that works. No. Okay, let's check what query we are generating then. Ah, we aren't ordering at all. Let's change that now. Oh, okay, yeah, we're not using the parent get method, which does ordering by default. Okay, so, so we'll do this db order by, and then we'll just add in this order by. And let's remove those dump here, and that should fix it. Okay, check that. Yep, that works. So, okay, that's out of the way. Okay, now let's just see. There were a couple of things that we needed to check. The context should be a subpage of about. Well, we've checked that already and that works. And uh, then the Darth Vader article should be first because it's the most recent now. And here it is. It's at the top in the home page. It's at the top in the news archive page. And it's at the top in recent news. So that's good. And then we should not be able to see the future article. It's not here. So that looks good and it's not here either. Let's just check to see what happens if we reset the publication date to the present. Add in the browser, and yet now we're seeing the future article, so that's cool. Okay, let's just go back and delete that. We don't need it anymore. So yeah, that's been deleted. 
And now the last thing to do is display the recently modified articles on the dashboard. So let's just do that. So let's open up the dashboard controller and go into the index method. Now all we need to do here is fetch the last modified articles. So first we need to load the article model and then we'll need to make sure we order by modified date in a descending order like so. Then we need to set a limit. Let's say we'll set it to five. Okay. And then we'll create a variable called this data recent underscore articles and we'll set it to this article model get now as you may remember we made it so that in my model if the order is already set then that's the order active record will use to order the result so that should work let's go ahead and see if it does let's do a quick dump okay and we are indeed getting the darth vader article first and that is the article we just modified so that's good now, if we have five articles, the last index should be four, and it is. Okay, so let's go back to our IDE, remove our dump, and let's add a comment here as well. Fetch recently modified articles. Okay, and now we'll just open up the dashboard view. Okay, first let's change welcome to recently modified articles. And then we'll check if we have any articles. So, if count recent articles... And if we do, we'll open up a UL tag and let's close that tag as well and add an end if statement. Then let's loop through the articles. So for each recent articles as article. And of course, we need to do an end for each as well. Now in between, we can display our article. So we'll open and close list tags and then echo an anchor. Now it will link to admin, article, edit, article ID. The text will be the result of our escape function and we'll pass in the article title. And let's echo the modified date as well, like so. And of course we need to move the end for each statement after our list item, not before. Okay, let's check the looks of that. Well, quite good, apart from the verbose date format. I'll just click a link. And uh, uh, it seems I forgot the slash there. Now, that's a bit sloppy, I'm afraid. Okay, let's just go back and fix the date first. Now, we'll want to display a date with a format of year, month, day. And as a parameter, we should pass a Unix timestamp. So let's just do a string to time and then pass in our pub date. And that should do. Okay, now let's also add that dreaded slash to the edit URI like so and check if that made any difference. Okay, that modified date looks good. Now let's check an edit link. Yep, and that works quite well. Okay, now that's just one final tweak and then we're done. The meta title only contains the site name. So let's add something to it for SEO purposes. Open up the CMS helper and create a function called add meta title. Now it will take a string as a parameter and what this will do is it will prepend the meta title with that string followed by a hyphen. Okay, first we need to get an instance of the CodeIgniter super object. So we'll do ci is get instance and then we'll set ci data meta title. We'll run the string through our escape method and we'll follow it by space hyphen space and by ci data meta title that should prepend our meta title with that string now i don't think we already added meta title to the front end controller we did in the admin controller but i don't think we got the front end controller so just let's just open that up no it's not there yet so i will just add this data meta title and set it to config item site name now we'll open up the page head component the view component and replace site name with meta title now let's see if we can make that work with pages. We'll just open up the page controller. Inside of the index method, just after we fetch the page, we'll do add meta title and pass in the page title. Let's check in the browser. And yes, there it is in the title bar. Okay, go to the news archive. Yep, working like a charm. Okay, now let's also add that to the article detail controller. Open it up. And before we load the view, let's do add meta title and pass in the article and make sure we specify the title property there. Now we'll check that as well. Yeah, looking good. And that just about wraps it up for the entire building a CMS with Code Igniter series.
Now, of course, there's loads of stuff that we could add on here. We could implement HMVC to make it truly modular and easier to extend. We could add caching, featured images for the articles, an image editor for the HTML fields, RSS feeds, full text search, a sitemap, 15 level deep navigation support, categories, system settings, multiple language support and what have you. But as I said in the intro to this course, the object is to give you some hands-on experience in building a complete Code Igniter application. However, I think with a little tweaking and a good run-through check for security issues, this could very well form the base for a small client project. Now, don't forget, if you ever need any support in building Code Igniter applications, Codeigniter has an amazing forum where dozens of experienced Codeigniter developers will be more than happy to help you with any problems you might run into. Also, make sure to check out the Codeigniter IRC channel. There's lots of Codeigniter developers out there who really, really know their stuff. And above all, make sure to bookmark the Codeigniter user guide. It's truly amazing and gives a thorough explanation of all the Codeigniter features. And it really should be your first point of reference. Well. I hope you enjoyed the course. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. My name is Joost van Veen. I'll see you soon.